This is a true tale of Africa, a place which men have yet to change. It is a place where all the people are as innocent as children. The story is set in a country covered by forest, as the land around the old man's village was before the farmers came and cut and burned the trees. The hills are cloaked by jungle, from the peaks blue in the day's heat to the cool shadows by the stream. He has been to this place and seen such wonders of the earth as it was in its innocence before the coming of fire. He met a strange tribe there, like men, yet shorter and much stronger, their mouths large, their teeth as powerful as a leopard's, their muscles hard as ebony. They liked to show their strength, and when they shouted, their voices were heard an hour's walk away. At first, when the old man met the tribe, he was very afraid and wanted to hide. Yet he discovered they are usually a peaceful race, and he came to know them not as dangerous enemies, but as gentle friends. He was shown this place by an English woman. She knew this tribe as the old man knows those who live in his village. She had stayed amongst them for many years, walked with them through their lands and given names to each of them. To her, they were like her family. The English woman refers to them as chimpanzees. The old man calls them the people of the forest. This is the story of a chimpanzee called Fifi, who lives in the forest with her family. She's 25 years old, a middle-aged mother, and she spends a good deal of her time letting the present swirl around her, as if she's daydreaming of the past. Apparently lost in these long gone days, their mother withdraws from the play and the children have to look to each other for company. The most important events in Fifi's life started 20 years ago, when she was a gentle five-year-old. At that time, her two older brothers, Fabian and Figan, were playful young rivals. Fabian was the bigger and the stronger of the two brothers, and he frequently made this clear to young Figan. Figan did not like being inferior to anyone, but there was very little he could do about it. Fifi watched as he went off on his own to vent his feelings by hitting and kicking stones and throwing them. Fabian ignored the behavior of his adolescent brother. Fabian preferred the company of the adult males. And Fifi had little interest in her big brothers. She preferred the tiny baby, Flint, who had been born five weeks earlier to their mother, Flo. At 
At this age, Fifi, like all young females, was captivated by small infants. She was longing for a chance to touch him. Adolescent Figgen was not interested in babies. He wanted to play, and with Fabian gone, his sister Fifi would do. But Fifi refused. She was only interested in staying close to the new baby. Her refusal to play annoyed Figgen, and he showed it. Flo, with her distinctive button nose, was about 45 years old. She was a tolerant mother. If Fifi became too persistent, Flo didn't punish her. Instead, she tried to distract her daughter by tickling her. But Fifi would not be put off. And so all Flo could do was walk away, taking Flint with her and leaving Fifi frustrated. Flo and her family were not alone in the forest. They were part of a community of 50 individuals. Not always staying together, each could wander around in the forest with friends or alone for days or even weeks at a time. During their absence, there might have been changes in the hierarchy. So each male had to re-establish his position in the community by force if necessary. Fifi decided to retreat. Her mother hid and Figgen soon followed. Fifi fled up a tree. From her vantage point in a vine, Fifi watched the turmoil. Fights and injuries sometimes occurred, but more usually each tried to intimidate the others by displays of strength and making the most noise. During struggles for power, allegiances were useful. Brothers always helped each other. Friends, on the other hand, could be fickle. The struggle was ended by a tiny grass cut on a tender finger. After a final display of strength, the conflict ended. The 
the losers began to pay homage. The first bowing submissively. Figgin undoubtedly longed to be the dominant male, to be able to ignore his underlings. Friends and families greeted each other. Fabin hand-kissed an anxious female to settle her worries. Another young female was still nervous of the big male. By kissing her, he reassured her that all was well again.